Hello, this is Dr. Paul Miller from the Fertility Center of the Carolinas. I'm going to talk to you today about puberty. It's important for you to keep in mind that puberty is a brain event. And it has to do with the uh, complex interaction between brain, pituitary, and ovaries. The brain is going to send out pulses of GnRH, gonadotropin releasing hormone, Depending on the frequency and amplitude of those pulses, the pituitary will then send out pulses of uh, its two gonadotropins, LH and FSH, luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone. The ovaries then make uh, estradiol, among other things, which then feeds back to the central nervous system uh, where things are controlled uh, from the hypothalamus. It's important for you to understand also that this uh, feedback mechanism is intact even for uh, the fetus in utero. Uh, the issue for the fetus is simply that the um, high doses of placental steroids that are circulating create a, a profound negative feedback effect, so LH and FSH levels are extremely low. Uh, once the child is born, however, when that placenta is removed, that negative feedback inhibition is, is gone, and suddenly uh, there uh, is a burst of LH and FSH activity and in fact even some uh, modest rises in estradiol levels. This can sometimes lead to formation of uh, small uh, breast buds or even uh, nipple discharge in the uh, neonate. We usually, usually talk about stages of pubertal development. Um, it starts with growth, growth acceleration. Uh, next would be then theolarchy. then adrenarchy, and later menarchy, and uh, then normal adult uh, menstrual cycles. Uh, the uh, duration of this entire spectrum is about 4.5 years. Now, the rate at which this goes and uh, the onset of puberty uh, is very much dependent upon uh, several factors, not the least of which is uh, nutrition. And, and this is the proposed uh, mechanism for why uh, children are going through uh, puberty at a younger age uh, in Western societies. Um, it also is dependent upon uh, ethnicity. We know that uh, African American and Hispanic girls uh, in the United States tend to go through puberty or initiate puberty uh, earlier than their uh, Caucasian uh, counterparts. Um, it also can have to do with uh, not just nutrition but weight, um, more particularly fat. There was a, a critical weight theory of uh, Frisch that was popular many years ago where, where uh, it was hypothesized that uh, when girls went from 15% body fat to 23% body fat that they would initiate menses. We now know that, that is, it's more likely that um, it is connected to the hormone leptin which is produced by fat cells and plays a permissive role in reproduction. It's a way of, this, of the periphery signaling the central nervous system that the individual has enough stored energy as fat to uh, maintain and sustain a pregnancy. So we'll, we'll come back to a few other factors in just a moment. I, I first want to talk to you then about each of these uh, stages. Um, growth acceleration is uh, dependent upon um, growth hormone. And it uh, typically occur occurs two years earlier in girls uh, than in boys. It is also uh, dependent upon the presence of sex steroids. Uh, you need sex steroids to stimulate uh, growth hormone release. Uh, most of the time, uh, what we do to uh, investigate this area is just simply plot uh, height and weight on uh, growth curves. These are standardized printouts that are available online or uh, in just about every family medicine or uh, pediatric office. The uh, next step then uh, is uh, theolarchy. Um, theolarchy is uh, onset of uh, breast development. It occurs at a median age of uh, 9.8 uh, years old. Um, it is uh, very much estrogen dependent. Uh, you really can't get any uh, breast growth without normal levels of estrogen. 
and we usually divide up the uh, uh, stages of uh, breast development using what are called uh, the uh, Tanner stages. The um, uh, stage one is infantile breast. Stage two would be formation of a breast bud. Stage three is more of a, a raised breast mound. Uh, stage four is uh, often called a double contour sign. With stage four, the breast contour is like this, and a real area may stick out slightly, something like that. Um, and then stage five is a normal smooth uh, contour between the uh, breast and the uh, areolar areas. Uh, those stage four um, contours can persist into adulthood and are not necessarily um, abnormal. Adrenarchy is the uh, next step. Important for you to understand that adrenarchy uh, can precede theolarchy in about 20% of cases. It is uh, usually marked by growth of uh, pubic hair. Axillary hair usually uh, starts a couple of years later, and it really is uh, associated with increased adrenal responsiveness to ACTH. There's no significant ACTH uh, increase that uh, triggers uh, this phase of puberty. Um, here, too, we talk about Tanner stages. Uh, stage uh, one is, uh, is obviously uh, no pubic hair. Stage two, a scant pubic hair growth uh, over the uh, labia majora. Stage three is extension up the uh, uh, mons. Stage uh, four is to the uh, inguinal creases. And then stage five is with extension down the thighs. Uh, median age for adrenarchy is uh, 10.5 years. And so obviously there's a, a slight gap there between Thelarchy and adrenarchy, but occurring in fairly uh, rapid succession. Now, menarche is, uh, again, the next step. And this is the onset of uh, menstrual bleeding. Uh, it does seem to be occurring earlier in Western cultures. Um, also, uh, it can be influenced by fat, as I mentioned. Uh, other things that may bring it on earlier are uh, urban living, living in equatorial regions, um, and delayed menarche is associated with blindness, strenuous exercise, poor nutrition, and some medications. The median age of uh, menarche is 12.8 years. So 9.8, 10.5, 12.8, those are the things to remember. Um, also interesting um, is that uh, after menarche, linear growth slows, and uh, most girls will have uh, less than or equal to uh, six centimeters of growth once they uh, hit menarche. And that has to do with the estrogen effect on uh, closure of epiphyseal plates. If you uh, are ever faced with a quiz that asks about uh, the uh, endocrine hallmarks of uh, puberty, always uh, uh, good to remember that the uh, first sign is uh, increased uh, nighttime pulses of uh, LH. That's uh, puberty uh, in a nutshell. Um, precocious puberty then would be any uh, onset of pubertal development before the age of eight. And that uh, has stood the test of time. Um, uh, there is a movement afoot to try and lower this number somewhat, but still in, in most uh, clinical areas, this is still considered the, um, the uh, threshold uh, below which uh, investigation is warranted. Uh, we usually divide up precocious puberty into uh, uh, two areas, uh, GnRH uh, dependent and independent causes. The uh, far and away, the uh, most common uh, causes is idiopathic. We certainly uh, just don't know what's going on in those circumstances. 72% of cases, in fact, fit into this category. Uh, somewhere around 8% will have central nervous system problems. Uh, and those two categories fit under the heading of GnRH-dependent uh, precocious puberty. Of the GnRH-independent causes, the most common are ovarian cysts or tumors, uh, accounting for approximately 12%. Uh, other uh, ectopic sources, we can add atropins, adrenal tumors, and then a specific syndrome called McCune-Albright syndrome that I'll describe for you in a second. CNS lesions can be um, 
hamartomas, craniopharyngiomas, astrocytomas, gliomas, neurofibromas, ependymoma, supracellular teratoma, rickets, encephalitis, meningitis, hydrocephalus, so all these things. Obviously, some even non-space-occupying lesions can do this. For the ovarian causes, uh, the most common uh, things we see are granulosa thecal cell tumors, gonadoblastomas, teratomas, lipoid cell tumors, and cyst adenomas. Uh, important for you to remember that for ovarian causes, 80% uh, um, have a palpable mass. And it's also important for you to keep in mind that uh, most of the time when we see these um, ovarian causes, that it's uh, much more rapid onset uh, of puberty and uh, progression through pubertal stages, and it tends to happen in younger women as well. The Kuhn Albright is um, a, an interesting uh, uh, syndrome. It is marked by uh, a triad of uh, precocious puberty, along with cafe au lait uh, birthmark, and uh, something called polyostotic fibrous uh, dysplasia of bone. The polyostotic fibrous dysplasia leads to a, a characteristic um, uh, x-ray finding where the bones have uh, some areas of uh, thinning and, and uh, poor calcification. Cafe au spots are simply a light brown uh, birthmark that can be found uh, anywhere on the child's uh, body. Diagnostically, when you're looking at people with uh, uh, precocious puberty, you're going to want to look at their growth charts and their tanner stages. Also going to want to look for any uh, changes to external genitalia and breasts. Lab-wise, we usually look at um, gonadotropins. So we're, uh, we're going to go ahead and get um, FSH, LH, HCG. Uh, we're going to look at uh, thyroid studies, thyroid function tests. Um, if there's any signs of what's called contrasexual precocious puberty, that means uh, masculine type uh, features in a girl, we're going to look at uh, dehydroepiandrosterone sulfate, which is an adrenal gland androgen, as well as uh, testosterone. Uh, it is useful to look at estradiol, but uh, not always. Uh, we also uh, sometimes look at progesterone. And um, if, again, there's any sign of uh, contrasexual precocious puberty, we'll also get a 17-hydroxy progesterone. Um, and that's uh, simply because that's the um, substrate for the 21-hydroxylase uh, uh, enzyme. And if there's a uh, non-classic adrenal hyperplasia, uh, you'll see an elevation in this. Um, we also will uh, sometimes do what's called a uh, GNRH stim test, uh, also known as a factorial stim test. And this just takes advantage of the fact that um, GNRH uh, is self-priming. So in other words, if, if you give GNRH to a, a child who has never um, started the pubertal process, they'll have a minimal response to that GNRH injection. If they have had uh, exposure in the past to GNRH, they will have a normal adult response. Uh, the other things that we do diagnostically in order to get a better idea of how um, their hormones have affected their growth, etc., is we usually do um, an x-ray of the non-dominant wrist for bone age. Many years ago, uh, folks put together a, an atlas called the Grolich Pile Atlas that uh, shows uh, at what chronological ages the, the bones of the wrist ossify. And so it's just a way of judging the, the child's biological age as opposed to chronological age. And if we see that their biological age, their bone age is advanced more than a year past their chronological age, well, then that's uh, significant. Also, uh, typically, if there's a, a, a CNS uh, suspicion, we'll do an MRI of the pituitary, and then um, also uh, ultrasound of the uh, pelvis if there's a thought of any type of ovarian lesions. Treatment-wise, it really depends on the type of precocious puberty. Uh, if it's a uh, GNRH-dependent uh, phenomenon, we'll go ahead and give uh, these kids uh, a drug called uh, Depo-Lupron. Uh, Lupron is a uh, GNRH agonist, but because it has a side chain at the uh, sixth amino acid in this uh, decapeptide molecule, molecule um, it will uh, 
uh, chronically uh, stimulate uh, uh, the pituitary to the point where the uh, levels of LH and FSH will be exhausted. For the GnRH uh, independent ones, uh, you essentially give whatever medications will stop either the gonadotropins or sex steroids. So um, we uh, use uh, aromatase inhibitors like exemestane or letrozole that inhibit uh, the conversion of androgens to estrogens. If there is any uh, signs of contrasexual precocious puberty, we'll give um, anti-androgens like flutamide or peripheral androgen blockers like spironolactone. These are the essential things I think you need to know for puberty and precocious puberty. Um, hope you enjoy it.